Welcome back to We Happy Few. Last episode, we spoke with General Bing, found out that we did indeed know about the paper mache tanks all the way back then, but just didn't tell anybody about it. And Ollie wants to reveal the truth now, but General Bing doesn't want to have anything to do with that. So we're going to go to Miss Bing and see if we can get some help from them. Observe how the concrete is used for its raw and unpretentious honesty, contrasting with the pretentious ornamentality of the Victorian buildings of the parade. Rather than hiding the structure, the surface preserves the shape of the in-situ casting forms, revealing the nature of its construction. Well, I think it's hideous. I've never fathomed brutalism myself. Let's craft some healing stuff, because I think I have... Yeah, just two medkits and that's it for actually healing. But I've already picked up some plants, so we should be able to make some. Yeah, pretty good amount, actually. I could make some more basic healing bombs if I wanted to. Let's do that. I can never quite bring myself to hate those poor sick bastards. I try and help them sometimes. I don't even know what for. Because they're still people. Hey. Better that. Oh yeah, definitely try not to kill them. Now, try to behave whilst you're in the village, okay? Hello. Would you like to donate to our Uncle Jack charity drive? On your trolley, you huffy wee fuck bumper! <laughs> Ollie! Oh, my goodness. You're Ollie Starkey. It's Ollie Starkey! Fuck the lot of you! Jack's a collaborator and a traitor! Uh, uh. Damn, I, I'm trying to get a charge up attack because I just recently got the, the thing that makes my charge up attacks do an extra 100% damage. So it would probably kill him in one hit. Oh damn, a medicated bomb doesn't heal us very much at all. Jesus. Stay still, you bastard! This is where they hanged Mr. Cranmer, isn't it? And Mr. and Mrs. Lashford. Aye, Tommy and the Lashfords. You see those bits of rope? Why didn't the Germans just arrest them? I think we thought they'd be happier if they didn't have to. And dead men tell no tales. Did you help? Nay. But I didn't hinder, neither. Does that mean you're just as guilty? You're full of questions today, aren't you? So people with red hats are going to hate me on sight, so I need to be careful of them. I think everybody else will be okay with me, though, right? What makes you oh. think you can wear that? Oh, they just don't like that. Uh, are you okay with a padded suit? You come. Nope, they're not okay with a padded suit. Welp. Walk around dressed like them. Well, lad, this is what we train for. You can't just wave a weapon about. <laughs> Ow! Ow! Right! Yeah. Right at it with you, the nice guy! No! <laughs> I'm ready to let you bring me down! I know it with you. Not exactly sure what to do, to be honest. Can I. Ollie can't unequip, Ollie can't be naked. Damn it, I was about to say. Can I just be naked? Would they accept that? I mean, am I supposed to just aggro everybody in this whole freaking city? Ooh. Let's loot this house. Let this be a lesson to you then. I 
can't open doors while I have a charged up attack going. Come out, come out, wherever you are. We all get what's coming to us in the end. I was gonna start looting. Oh, someone just found a body. I'm just gonna loot quick and dirty. No, don't don't take a nap. That's not very quick. I couldn't feel better, could you? There's somebody down here. Is there nobody here? What body did somebody find? Where's that coming from? Oh, it's you! You may have a wee headache later. Don't suppose I looted a new suit? No. Don't suppose I looted the stuff that would allow me to make a new suit? Which would be... Boiler suit, I guess, is the only one that you probably would fit in. No, I need five shredded raincoats and one more coarse linen. Hmm... I guess it would be ideal maybe to wait till nighttime because then there'd be less people around. Can I sleep in someone else's bed? Isn't that supposed to be an issue or something? Let's try it. Midnight? Night, night. Nothing bad seemed to happen. Let's take a glucose syringe. Yeah, perfect. Probably gonna be running, so let's eat some stuff and drink some stuff. <laughs> I'll pop a joy. It's not like when I'm going coming down from the joy. It's not like it's gonna matter really. Everybody hates me anyway. Oh, what is that? It's uh, food poisoning, right? Well, this don't need to use this right now. Well. It's what is that then? If that's not food poisoning, this would cure it. And people take joy on purpose. Oh, <laughs> oh it just makes us sick. Well, I guess there's no point in taking that joy, was there? 
seconds. I mean, we just set up the alarm anyway. All right, do we have like a crash? Uh, we don't. Well. Oh, man. Bobby's protecting the haves from the have-nots since 1829. Mm, I can't seem to even try to open that. I think I have to probably not be in combat. Okay, at least the freaking sickness is over. Given how many medicated bombs and stuff it takes, let's just take a first aid kit. Even that doesn't heal us up, heal us up all the way. I won't have it! Stop! In the name of the law! You're gonna get what's coming to you! Stop! In the name of the law! Down up! Down up! There's way too many of them for me to take them out, really. Fuck. I won't have it. I won't. Damn. Forgot I'm really good at combat. Like, really good at combat. Oh, just broke your weapon. I've got that ability, asshole. That's right, I do have that ability. Can knock my enemy down with a well-timed block. Chain sweep, irrelevant for this weapon. 25% um, chance to break an enemy weapon when blocking. Chance to stun. I should probably loot them. Not that the bobby pins are useful. Actually, not at all, because I have the multi-tool. But constable's keycard, apples, electric truncheon maybe? I think that's... As some would say property is theft. I think that's enough. I don't need every little bit. Hmm. It let me enter that even though I'm not in... Or even though I am in combat. Oh no, now they're coming for me. Uh, well given that it doesn't really matter what I wear, I might as well wear my padded suit, huh? Suit. That should allow me to blend in reasonably with just general people. Won't matter right now, but during ooh, during daytime it will. So we anything good to throw at that? Glass bottles don't are good. Not really. I mean a shock grenade would probably do it, but that's over the top. A bigger banger? That's a waste. Is doing almost nothing. No, oh, I can't knock on the door in combat. enough joy sometimes one forgets the silliest things people in town are getting a tad bit skinny i think they're starving to death and they're painting the streets in fucking rainbows 
Have you not noticed? Have you had your joy, Ollie? Why are you all wearing those ridiculous new masks? You should get one. They shape your face into a smile. And when you smile, you can't help being happy. You were kind to me, even when I got confused. I had no one else to turn to. Oh, Ollie. We have to tell people. They need to know the truth. No, Ollie. People do not need to know the truth. Truth is the enemy of happiness. Isn't that the decision we all made? Oh, but you know the truth, don't you? There's not a thing I can tell you that you don't already know, is there? No. It's better not to know. You, of all people, should understand that. I'm truly sorry about this, Miss Bing. Help! There's a downer in my... Ah! 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 <sighs> Is this some sort of silly prank? When I left the village, I thought you people knew what you were doing. Turns out, well, I've been keeping to myself. I have a pillbox in my kitchen. Would you mind, terribly, bringing me my joy? Oh, no, I can't. Please, Ollie. You were never cruel. I'm a soldier, ma'am. They teach you to be cruel. I need to see the executive committee. They won't listen. You'll only upset them and... Then they'll take more joy and forget. They don't want the whole truth. No one wants the whole truth. You know what, Miss Bing? I'll come back. I'll come back when you're in your right mind. No! You can't, please. I I'll take you to the executive committee. I'll walk you there. Anything. Just please give me my joy. I need my joy. Why won't you give me my joy? Sure, I'll go get it for you right away. Now, where would a woman stash her joy? I'm afraid joy is after my time. I'm surprised that they used Sally Boyle's voice actor for Miss Bing. It's very noticeable to me. I gotta make sure I loot this place well. It's a rich person's place. It's gotta have real good stuff. Whoops. That's almost better than whiskey. Here we go. She's so- They're not going to give it to her. Found their pills quick enough. Oh, that goes outside. Oh, there's Bit so much stuff here. Makes everything. So she's got milk. Oh yeah, milk is that's a rare commodity. Let's stick with downstairs for now. Swamp gas coming out of them. Oh. Oh, never mind. That was just the effects of me coming off of joy, I think. I need some food. Oh. Let's eat a bunch of those, get my blood sugar up a bit. Yeah, that's good. Hmm, 
quotes, return pills to Victoria Bing. This is what you were looking for, wasn't it? I'm afraid I can't let you have it. Why the fuck are you doing this? You evil downer bastard! I am going to kill you! I am going to kill you! Sorry. I need my words to stick in your head instead of flying right out the other ear. I've got to answer the blower. People depend on my decisions. She's got her own pneumatic. I better answer it. Who the hell is Clive Birthwhistle? You should find out if she likes him or not. You can't trust her, of course. Maybe there's a letter or something somewhere. They're going to need an answer right away. You don't know how critical my answers are. Answer the letter and send the response. Uh, I should probably read what they send first. To Victoria Bing from Clive Birtwistle, Arthur, uh, regarding Arthur's office. As Arthur's office is now vacant, I do hope you'll see your way to letting me have it. We all saw how he behaved at Deirdre's birthday party. He's probably gone on a holiday by now. I hope you'll not keep his office vacant, as you did Prudence's. Not that I am questioning your authority. I know you and Prudence were so fond of each other. I'm merely concerned that Prime Office is going to waste. Surely someone as efficiency-minded as yourself can see that. Clive. P.S. Arthur was only senior to me because I made a lateral transfer from the Bureau of Civic Happiness. His office should have been mine all along. Maid outfit? I can wear that? <laughs> I can wear a maid outfit. Oh, it's a quest item. Also, now you can attend to Madame. Wear this in Victoria's house to answer the door. <laughs> okay, this is gonna get fun. Sternly worded letter from Victoria Bing to Clive Bird Whistle regarding insubordination. There is nothing wrong with your bloody office except that it is too small to hold your inflated ego. You seem to think if you do a terrible job and gossip about me, don't think I didn't hear what you said to Deirdre, I'll promote you. And frankly, Arthur's throughput is twice yours and far more accurate. Do not send this to Clive. Take another joy. <laughs> Ooh, I don't think she likes him very much. Happy New Year. From General Bing. January 1st, 1962. Happy New Year, my dear. Congratulations on your promotion to Executive Council to the Executive Committee. I feel certain this will be one of Wellington Wells' happiest years thanks to all your hard work. Your happy face campaign has been a rousing success. I well remember when you suggested putting joy in the water. You were right after all. I'm proud to call you my daughter. Keep up the good work. So I can write two different responses. Give Clive Arthur's office or shut up and get back to work. Clive, shut up and get back to work. Dear Mr. Birthwhistle, thank you so much for your suggestion. May I suggest you spend a little more time pondering your work and less time pondering where you do it? That sounds like her, all right. Yes, I did notice the secret book that we have to pull to probably open a secret chamber. I'm excited to check that out. Oh, can I not read my own response back? Yeah, I can't. It's not my notes. Damn. Unless... I mean, it's a quest item, right? Yeah. We can't do anything with it, though. Like, we can't read it. Letter of Transit. Is that useful to me at all? You are allowed to cross to the parade district. Yoink. 
I hope that's useful. Such a tiny little cannon, so cute. I wonder if it works. Wait, am I going in circles? Yes, I am. Rajasthan Central Prison. From July 1932. My darling Victoria, I'm sure your father has told you his version of why I've been sent away. Please know that I love you and never intended to leave you. I hope that someday you will understand that I was doing my own duty, just as he does his. India cannot remain under British rule any longer. Surely even he can see that. I fear for your future if he takes you back to England. I was there for boarding school. And for all they give you, your rank at table, and seat you as is proper for the daughter of a Maharaja, when they look at you, they see a wog. You won't be half English. In England, you will always be a wog, no matter how hard you work to imitate their ways. I'm writing to your grandfather, asking him to take you in when your father goes back to England. He did not mean to shout at you when you called his palace backwards for not having electric fans. He was thinking about politics. Please be a good girl and make up with His Highness, your grandfather. I suspect that you will disregard my advice as it comes from prison. Your father must seem like the much smarter parent right now, but someday you will know all the things that I know. I hope you will understand who you are and what your true duty is before it's too late. Your loving mum. This is a really interesting bit of backstory. If I'm understanding it correctly, uh, this is a letter from Victoria's mom. Victoria's the person we have tied up in that chair down there. Uh, and this person was also married, probably married, I assume, or at least had a child with General Bing. So General Bing is Victoria's father. And this is from like, what year is it now? Is it in the 60s? So I think it's from like 30 years ago. Uh, this is from India, and remember General Bing was in India for a while. We heard some stories, like that really fucked up story about shooting an elephant when they didn't really need to when they were in India. They're telling that story about General Bing. Yeah, so General Bing's definitely been to India, so I guess they were there uh, in India as part of the uh, British occupation? British? I I'm not sure what it's called. Sorry, my knowledge of history is honestly complete garbage, but I do know that Britain um, did a lot of horrible stuff in India and really tried to take control of it. So I guess General Bing was one of the people that did that. And it sounds like they married or at least had a child with um, an Indian person who was there, probably. And consequently, Victoria is, I think, half Indian, half English. And this is a letter from their mom from prison, who uh, it says, India cannot remain under British rule any longer. Surely even he can see that. And they're in prison, so I'm guessing they tried to do something to uh, hurt the British occupation. And that's why they ended up in prison, probably in prison by the British. And her mom is worried that if we go back to England, the people there are going to be bigoted towards us and see us as uh, a wog. I'm completely unfamiliar with that term, but I get the gist of it, obviously. Going to see us as some basically subhuman foreigner. But obviously we did actually go back to England. I guess it kind of worked out. Not really. I don't know. <laughs> Can you say this? This world in We Happy Few is working out? No, not at all. Oh, what was that? A letter from Bing's wife, so another one. Also 1932. Uh, both from July. Dear Pinky, or should I call you Colonel Bing now? I'm sure you will say that having me arrested was your duty, but duty to whom? Does not your own family command your loyalty? Okay, hold up, let's just stop for a second. So they were arrested because General Bing told on their own fucking wife. God, they really are that sort of person, huh? I thought you were different, but you were like other Englishmen. 
How very convenient for you to be one of your... Uh, to be done of your Indian wife before you sail home. Once you were dazzled by my father's palace and connections, without which you might still be a junior officer. But when your orders came for England, you began to see me with different, more critical eyes, didn't you? Or perhaps you found out that I'd contacted a solicitor. Divorce is rather scandalous among the officer set. Perhaps you worried it would harm your career. Oh, but now that you've made the great sacrifice of arresting your own wife, you might even get promoted to general for your patriotism. Bravo, Pinky, bravo. You English do go for that duty above all tosh. You may fool others with it, but I always know exactly who you are. Perhaps that's the true reason you can no longer bear to me my eyes. I no longer know how to sign off on a letter to you. Neither love nor yours seems appropriate anymore. Lily? Or Lily? P.S. I've asked my father to take Victoria when you sail for England. Don't pretend you object. You've undoubtedly been trying to think of a face-saving reason to leave her behind. What well, with her being the half-Indian daughter of a revolutionary. How very inconvenient that would be for you back home. Beautiful bathroom. By the time you read this... Whoa! I just looked at the... I just skipped to the end to see who wrote this. It says Prue. Prudence? We did... All he did say that we uh, had a good relationship with Prudence, right? Or maybe a note said that we had a good relationship with Prudence, I think. September 6th, 1964. Dearest V, by the time you read this, I'll be gone. Leaving you is the hardest part of what I have to do. Oh my god. I got a hint that this might be the case. Given that they uh, really liked each other or whatever they said about Prudence and Victoria. But I couldn't dream that my wildest dream is actually true. They're two women that love each other. Fuck yeah. You're right about me uh, about my being off joy. The others were easy to fool, but you, of course, were always so attuned to my moods. I'm sorry for saying you were just imagining it, but I did so to protect you. You must know by now my true feelings for you, though I suspect they are not reciprocated. Please don't come looking for me. We both know that your sense of duty is at the core of your being. I will always remain your true friend, even though our paths must now diverge. Yours truly, Prue. Mm, okay, so maybe not in love. Prue was in love with Victoria, but sounds like Victoria probably wasn't in love with Prue. I don't know. Maybe Victoria wasn't in love with Prue. I've learned recently that apparently lesbians are generally just very, very thick when it comes to knowing whether somebody is actually in love with them or not. Wait, why is it still pointing to here? I don't know why. As if I didn't write the letter to Clive Burtwistle, but I did, so I don't need to do that anymore. Off you go. This is all some clever joke, isn't it? <laughs> it's terribly funny, Ollie. Let's just call this a prank, and you can untie me now. Please. Well, that's my regular off-site executive committee meeting. Won't they be surprised to find you've tied me up? What unconvincing lie are you going to try to fob them off with? You better answer it. What do I see? Tell them you're the general and the meeting's been postponed. Or put on the maid outfit? Can I, can I do that now? Apparently, yes. Ollie, she's going to scream if you don't gag her. Oh, good point. Get away! Hello, it's Beatrice Dalrymple from the executive committee. I'm so sorry. Something's come up. Please come back tomorrow. 
Is that General Bing? Yeah, I haven't got time to chit-chat. We're trying to save the world. All right. Tomorrow, then. Tomorrow, I guess. I hope Miss Bing didn't sneak off while I wasn't looking. Take the key and lock her up. Lock her up. Lock her up. Take the key and lock her up, my fair lady. I brought some food. I made them sing, Ollie, so they wouldn't be afraid. But then they had to get on the train. Do you remember how they screamed? Aye, I remember. All except my daughter. Your daughter? Aye, Margaret. Because she was dead. <gasps> You've got to eat. Oh, I'll throw it right back up. What was it your dad fed you when you were sick and couldn't eat anything else? <laughs> Coffee yogurt. I'll bring some. Give me my joy! <laughs> Why won't you give me my joy? I'll get you that coffee yogurt. <laughs> Why won't you give me my joy? Why won't you give me my joy? <laughs> All right, coffee yogurt. What is yogurt exactly? It's fermented milk, like cheese, only it doesn't curdle. So I just need some old milk and some coffee. And probably some sugar to make the medicine go down. This whole tying Victoria up thing is getting real dark and sad. I feel so bad for not giving them their joy. They're, they're crashing. Craft coffee yogurt. Oh, I just have to, have to craft it. Well, I looted the whole place, so I'm sure I have all the stuff. There it is. Well, that's coffee yogurt a la Starkey. <laughs> I hope she's not particular. Everything is quite all right. Sleepy tight. Nighty night. Everything's tucked out of sight, my fair lady. I think you'd better give her that yogurt. This is awful. You've ruined it. Oh, father. Why have you forsaken me? <laughs> I didn't know what else to do. Oh, that will be the gardeners. Perhaps you can suggest some lovely colour combinations. I think you better answer that. I didn't realise she was quite this popular. So who am I pretending to be? You could always pretend to be the maid. Who is it? It's Brown, the gardener. Could you get Miss Bing? I'm sorry, she's very busy. You should have said that she's out. She's very busy being out. I'll leave it with you then. Would you uh, open up, please? I haven't got time to shave. Well, wrap something around your face. And I'm a fat, ugly Scotsman. Not all maids are thin, pretty, and French. You've got all the bloody answers, haven't you? Just a minute! You better make sure she's out of sight. So, should I stick her in a closet somewhere? I'm afraid so. <laughs> yeah, we should move them. We should definitely leave that music on, cover up maybe the sounds of their muffled screams. We are taking a very long time to answer the door, aren't we? Uh, I need something around my face, what... What could that be? I mean, it would be here in outfits if I had it. Can I craft something? 
I mean, I could craft a gas mask. <laughs> Here's the counting of all the gardening supplies. She could pay me next week. Cheerio. I'll see that she gets it. There are acts of heroism you huh. never get a medal for, and they're some of the bravest. <laughs> I need air! Open the door! I'm suffocating! <laughs> I think you'd better let her out. No, you may not just leave her in there for a bit. I didn't say a word! I guess we still had something over our face somehow? Well, that's a good look for you. Suits you. You might want to shave a bit. Christ almighty, can't these people think for themselves? You must let me answer my messages. They won't know what to do on their own. I promise I won't put in any secret cries for help. I just need to answer. Who the hell is Prudence Holmes? You really ought to get out more, Ollie. Just let me point them in the right direction. Whereabouts of Prudent Holmes? From Constable HQ to Victoria Bing. Dear Miss Bing, we are attempting to ascertain the whereabouts of one of your employees, Prudence Holmes. We fear she may have become a downer. Have you seen her at your office or domicile or received any indication of her whereabouts? We would like to know when you last spoke to her. She's around or she's been gone? Definitely gone, right? Definitely gone. Uh, all right. I'm afraid she's been gone from the office for some time. Good luck. Why do I feel like a squealer? A squealer? What? I mean, if I told them they've been here... <laughs> oh, maybe I should have told them... See, the thing is, I was thinking we'd basically be saying like, Hey, we're harboring a fugitive and they try to come and get them. But maybe if we told them that they were hanging out here, we basically would be saying... Yeah, don't worry about it, they're not a downer. Shit. Well, that's the one I want to go with. I don't want to fuck over Prudence. When was my last save? Alright, loaded my save game, which happened to be from before I entered this place. <laughs> yeah, took me a while to get back here. But it's worth it to potentially save Prue or something. I also found something new as well. Uh, I found this note. Diary of Vicky Bing 1932. From when they were a child. July 4th, 1932. Dear Diary, Daddy says Mummy has been very wicked and has to be punished. He says India leaving the Empire would be like a child disowning her father. That is a very wicked thing indeed. July 5th. I wonder what England will be like. I hear it gets very cold there, though it isn't in the mountains. Maybe I'll get a new jumper. I hope it's red. July 6th. Got a letter from Mummy today and feel all muddled. Lady Derby didn't have much to say, but at least we jumped over some fences together. July 7th. Daddy and Grandfather have been arguing. I tried to listen in, but just when I got to the keyhole, they started speaking Hindi. Perhaps I should have learned after all. July 8th. Daddy never intended to take me back to England. He told Grandfather it was awkward politically to have a daughter whose mother is an imprisoned revolutionary. But Grandfather doesn't want an English girl giving the other girls in his palace ideas. He blames English education for what Mummy did. Nanny says once India is independent, it'll be dangerous for me, because Father is an English general. Is there no place in the world where I fit in? 
July 9th. Daddy says he will take me to England after all, but I must be good and be more English than the English, or whatever that means. If anyone there asks about mummy, I'm to say she was a princess, but not say of where, as if no one will guess. He insinuated I should say she's dead, though he refused to be clear. Would she bear a grudge if I said that? She wouldn't know the people I would say it to. I must improve my knowledge of English, of English place names. I do wish they would spell them the way they're said. If you read the name of a place in India, you can say it right away. But why is Worcestershire pronounced Worcester? And I think, uh, yeah, I can't save for this whole sequence in here. But let's say that Prue has been around. I think that's backing up Prue, I think. Bloody draws us. <clears throat> I've never even heard of Prudence Holmes. Why don't you ask someone else? You really ought to think things through. I did think it through. Bloody Rosas can go hang themselves. I'm not giving up, dear Prudence, wherever she is. Okay, good. Yeah, that is the option I want, then. Just let me point them in the right direction. Off you go. I was your friend. The only one who was nice to you. Why would you do this to me? This thing is everything all right? Uh, I'm sorry, but I shall have to enter the premises. Who's that? Why don't you go find out? Come in, constable. Everything's perfectly all right. We'll just see about that. Toasty feet. Have you at least got a cigarette? They'll kill you, you know. Who ever told you that? Last time I managed to dig some out of the rubble, a house collapsed on me. <laughs> I nearly died. Give me some joy! I need my joy! You'll feel better soon. Ish, I think. Miss Bing? Oh, Miss Bing? It's Constable Naismith. You're busier than a one-legged man at an arse-kicking contest, aren't you? You won't fool the bobbies. They'll expect their sandwiches. You think he's getting upset? Ollie, you better talk to him. They'll expect their sandwiches? What? You make sandwiches for the bobbies? Oh, sorry, Constable. Miss Bing is not here. Well, if you don't mind, ma'am, I'll make my own determination as to her localization. No! Come right in! Miss Bing? You around? You better get Miss uh. Bing back to the closet. Toasty ass? The children could stop screaming. You have to talk to them. Then they settle down for a bit. Are you mad? <laughs> Aye. We could have saved them, you know. The tanks were made of papier mache. Little Artie Hastings tore a hole in one of them. What could that possibly matter now? I suppose it doesn't. Except that's just the first lie. Then comes the victory that wasn't, and then the happy pills, and the Simon Says, because the kids are all gone. You can paint loaves of bread on the shop windows all you like, but if people don't wake up, we're all going to starve to death. Please, give me my joy. Oh, I need you here with me, ma'am. Not off in Neverland with Wendy and Peter. <sighs> all right. The tanks were paper mache. The children didn't have to get on the train. Poor Margaret Worthing didn't have to die. Nay, nah, she didn't. We go to City Hall, back entrance. There's a private elevator. The code is 0126. The date of the victory. I'll write you a letter of transit. It won't be enough. People won't face facts. 
Not until we take their joy. That's what we have to do, Ollie. And when we do that, they'll murder each other in the street. Then why would you help me? There hasn't been a baby born in Wellington Wells in 17 years. We don't talk about that. I'd forgotten that. Let's go see the executive committee. Oh. People have to know. In an hour, you horrible little man. I won't even know you exist. You have to find the letters of transit. I can't stay here. Victoria's probably run to the police already. Then hurry! Find them! Already done. Right! That can be the nice guy! Our own wee bannock burn. Jesus, look at those sparks. Well, that was unexpected. Ow. But I've got a letter of transit now. I'll see the executive committee in the parade. I'll tell them the food's running out. I'll make them listen. Let's put on a boiler suit. Although being nighttime, I don't think it matters. Plus trespassing really, really doesn't matter. Ugh. Where do I need to go? You know what, let's head over to the shelter. Oh wait, hold on, I need this. Right about here. Oh, there's also something here. The Jacobean Club. Jacobean Club? Jacobean? How do I get there? Try going around the other side. Mr. Knight, got it. The one that got it. Oh, Jesus. Really takes it out of your shoulders. Sorry, you had to see that. How do you get there? Do I have to go to the hatch and not the shelter? I don't know, let's try that. Yeah, there it is. Wait, no, that's not. Yeah, that's the shelter, not the track axis hatch. It's just too fun. Whack, they're dead. 
Well, I guess we'll meet in hell. Come on out of there. You never liked me, did you? Just a bobby slaying machine. A bobby flaying machine. Moldy and dank. Mm. Just how I like it. Good. A bit of privacy at traveling won't hurt. Okay. Well, I think that's a good place to end this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we are going to show the Bobby's the letter of transit and then go to the executive committee. <laughs>